I, Solomon Salakabdalu, do hereby inaugurate the newly executive of the National Youth Council of Nigeria, dated today, the 19th day of September 2018. May God bless Nigeria. The youth support your newly elected leadership. And the Honorable Minister, that perhaps you do not realize, here in this hall today, uh, Shagali is a is a is a young uh, Nigerian and a leader. I believe in him. He has a vision, and he's convinced about the vision. Just that. his vision is to liberate Nigerian youth and set a standard. Just that. So he's a, he's a young man that has a will. He has a political will as a, a leader. And it has all it takes. My name is Bendo Shagari, and I'm vying for the office of the president of the National Youth Council of Nigeria. He's a, he's a man I have come to understand and know for the past eight months. He's someone I, 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 I call my direct boss because I so much admire him. He's intelligent, he's proactive, he's so calm and cool and collected. In fact, he is an embodiment of leadership. I didn't even know him in person, but at the level of Gombe, his manifesto made everybody realize that he will be a better president for the council, considering the fact that the Christ has been in council and his age bracket and for his composure, his, his ideas were the kind of ideas the council needed and at the end of the day, he did emerge at the level of government. I decided to join the Youth Council deliberately uh, to be able to bring about a change in the organization. And I started with Sokoto. When my, we went back to Sokoto to find out what, the youth, what was going on in the Youth Council, we realized that there has never been an election in the states, and not even more than 10% of the youth in Sokoto are even aware of the organization and what it stands for. And the leadership was simply being appointed by state governments. And the biggest of it all, the person who was occupying the position of the chairman of the National Youth Council of Nigeria in Sokoto State is about 50 years of age or above. So it was quite insulting that our, our people like are advocating for youth inclusiveness and so on would be sitting by the side watching uh, someone of 54 or 52 years of age being the chairman of Sokoto. Because what we were doing in Sokoto at that time was trying to reform the Youth Council, give it a, a good name, give it a, a new face, let the youth of Sokoto know what the Youth Council stands for, let them all come into the Youth Council so that we can contribute collectively. I, I still have to give uh, thanks to the government of, the, of Sokoto State at that time under the leadership of Amin Waziri Tomol, who actually allowed us to do what we, f we thought uh, uh, was right for the state at that time because he intervened. That was the first time that a lot of people came in. We, we had a website, we had uh, a lot of programs. One of the programs I had was on drug abuse, community violence, uh, and entrepreneurship, and, 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 and so on. We engaged so many other partners in government and private organizations and everybody was quite happy. So we thought that if we could do that in Sokoto State, we could also do that in the national level. Do you personally have received this matter before now? Right from when you were chairman of Sokoto State. Yes, we have had the need So I think possible if someone is found with uh, marijuana, an ambulance will be called. Ever since the, we emerged, myself and my national ex co have never received a salary for once. So all the works we have been doing have been voluntary. 
if I'm going to travel anywhere to see anybody to do anything, it is out of our own money. Sometimes when we are doing, when we, we come up with programs, of course the ministry plays a role and gives us funding. But most of the time, most of the things we do are from our own pockets. The National Youth Council of Nigeria has donated relief materials, including food items, toiletries, clothing and other items to internally displaced persons at the Duremi camp in Abuja. The IDPs are not safe spaces, although they are safer from those places where the victims that are here have come from. So we would like to use this opportunity to call on the government to improve on its efforts in catering for these people over here. Nobody gives us salary, nobody gives us any allowances, nobody gives us a couple. In the past eight months, he has tried his very best to represent the Nigerian youth both at home and abroad. He has put in his own personal uh, resources and network into the council to be able to bring the council to greater heights. Monsieur Mohamed Bello Bala Shagari, President of the Na uh, du National Youth Council of Nigeria. We went to Algeria, uh, and, and that was, was, was fully funded by government, by the ministry. I went with the minister, and I had the opportunity of even addressing the African Union. Well, I would like to end by this saying by my president, President Buhari, who is famously known for fighting corruption, that if we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill us. So I think it's high time that we take the knife and kill corruption. I believe this is the only murder that you can get away with in any court and even in the court of court. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This travels has, has really opened up the National Youth Council of Nigeria to the world in the sense that for many years, the Youth Council hasn't had any representation in the international uh, space. But within my emergence, I tried to bring back that relationship, try to reconnect with our contemporaries from all over the world and as a result, I've even matched as the uh, coordinator of West Africa in the Afro-Arab Youth Council. I think if we still give him time, he still has a lot to offer. He's very innovative, very smart, and he has the interest of the council at heart as well. We in this Youth Council do not endorse anybody, and we remain non-partisan so as to be partial. We emerged uh, at a time when elections were approaching. It was quite difficult. So there was a task ahead of us. Before I became the president of the Youth Council, I'm one of those people who criticize seriously the endorsements that the Youth Councils make to political parties or, or, or candidates. So I said I was going to make a stance not to endorse anybody and not to be partisan at all costs. In the past administration, I can say the council was partisan because the former leader, the former leader has used the name of the council to campaign for a political party, which is not right. But from the emergence of the newly elected ESCOs from July 25th, 2018, I can confidently tell you that the council is non-partisan and apolitical as well. And that is why you could recall during that of a election hiring period and there was no active participation of national Youth council we are neutral we are not a pdp youth neither we are iapc youth we speak for the board so when we speak we should not be constrained to a particular party all was well until i tweeted during the electioneering period the atiku Abubakar campaign has based its campaign uh, based on news inclusion in government and he said that he was going to give 40 percent to the nigerian youth and i really never commented until once when i decided to comment what he has done uh, just to encourage others to, 
to perhaps do the same because this is a period when the youth of Nigeria have been are fighting or yearning for youth inclusion in government. So because of that, I, I decided to commend him. This is the first time somebody, an aspirant, is promising Nigerian youth 40% of his cabinet. Are you saying that Bello Balashagari as president should be silent, quite completely silent about that? It will all go well if the president of the Youth Council didn't react in appreciation of such a promise. It would have been hypocritical for the president not to say anything. He has sworn the oath to struggle for youth development, youth participation in policy making and in governance. And then you have one presidential candidate giving you a promise of 40% inclusion in his own cabinet. No, that would be unfair if he truly represents the Nigerian youth and not the government. I consider that tweet as a bargain for the Nigerian youth. So for me, that was a way of gratifying that and also in creating an incentive for Buhari's government to come up and do something more youth-friendly than what Atiku has offered. I don't think he was saying vote Atiku. Some porters are interpreting it that it's an endorsement, but I know that Bello Shagari has stood his ground that the National Air Council is apolitical. When the elections were over, I have received threats from certain quarters because of that uh, tweet saying that I will be removed from office. But I kept wondering because I wasn't appointed in, into office, I was elected. I don't think it's, a, it's, it's, it's enough to call for the president's removal or probably call for, 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 for questioning. We actually called for a meeting, but we never knew there was a script playing on. But on arrival, we realized there was already a premeditated script being played, even within the neck. And what was the feeling that the power that be wanted the president to go based on the tweet? One of the reasons why the meeting was called was because we were informed that there was a threat from the presidency to either impeach Bello Shagari or all the newly elected ESCO stand to be dissolved. It was a conspiracy against the president. Leveraging on the tweets, they are saying that if he does not go, or if he doesn't go, the whole neck will go. We went down to the Minister of Youth to ascertain, actually. And in that meeting, there was the Deputy Director of the Ministry of Youth and Sports present. And we tried to inquire from him what was actually the position of the government. And he said that uh, the government has interest. That meeting actually exposed a lot of ills going on in the council. And then from where I was sitting, I was able to observe a lot of things and understand what was actually going on. Pre our president, Komebulo Shagari, told him that he was elected by the Nigerian youth. And the interest of the Nigerian youth supersedes the interest of the ministry. <laughs> but the director of the ministry said that no. Forget about the National Youth, youth Council interest. It is the ministry that will make the Nigerian Youth Council to stand. There was a time when I defended the president on Twitter and I had so many insults from different quarters. Nobody complained. I do not think that Shagari antagonizes President Buhari because right before me and most of our, in most of our next meetings, he had always declared support for Buhari's laudable programs for youth development. In that meeting, they also passed for vote of no confidence on the president. And most of us ask question to that. How is it that we, we pass a vote of no confidence to the president who has been recognized internationally as won uh, an international award? He has been going on international functions and he has been doing a lot to, re to redeem the image of National Youth Council. Some of them who voted for his no confidence uh, for his, his no confidence vote told me confidentially that they did it under duress. At the long run, a lot of things went wrong. The process of the meeting was violated. A day before the, uh, the NEC meeting, our legal advisor, elected legal advisor, advised us and told us there was nothing like vote of no confidence on the president. So when you look at these allegations, these allegations are not impeachable offenses. The vote of no, the said vote of no confidence that was passed, do you understand me? The supporter of the motion declined. Do you understand that? He, he, he was not aware of the motion and he never went through and it was even his name that was written there as a second and he didn't even append his signature.
For over 10 years, the National Youth Council of Nigeria has been in leadership crisis, which has deprived the youth of Nigeria from having a unitary leadership to enable them to forge a common front. It was a crisis which disallowed an elected leadership to emerge. Crisis which has made the Nigerian youth lose many opportunities, including donor funding worth millions of dollars made for youth development. A crisis which has made the Youth Council lose its respect and credibility in the eyes of the world. Before now, Council has been into crisis, about 10 years crisis, and after a series of uh, peace meetings, so we was able to organize a unity congress that took place at Gombe State. So having passed through this level of free and fair election, as supervised by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport, we expect that these new executives will be able to drive the council from the so much problems it has so much problem it has been passing through over time. I want to let you know that the crisis was brought to an end in 2017 by our delegate minister and comrade, whom I'm, I often refer to our superhero, Barista Solomon Selkab Delong. Please a round of applause for the minister. Shagari's election was tougher than mine because it was an election that you had over um, five candidates gradually beating down to about three strong candidates and then um, he eventually emerged. It was tough. It was tough. At some point there were consensus reached just to allow for the best candidates to emerge. And um, it was quite interesting because it had the blessings of the government of the, of the day, the federal government. The Honorable Minister himself was present, declared it open and was there. The governor was there fully. The minister was there. We saw harmony for the first time that led to the emergence of President uh, Shagari as the president of the council. Uh, my expectation was going by what happened at the Gombe State. I felt that we have gotten it right. And uh, we've been, we are actually coming out from a war reading or crisis reading council. So I expect, uh, my expectation was, uh, you know, have a smooth running government of the youth council without external interference. We, uh, my expectation was that the Nigerian youth must have had an executive that is running, so that, you know, propagates and that will administer the activities of the Nigerian youth and also project the, the National Youth Council at the international level because, you know, before now, the image of the Youth Council has been dragged to the mud as a result of the crisis. Some people actually lost their lives during that election and um, the Youth Council will always be sentimental to that loss. They paid what we believe is a supreme price and at least for that sake, for the sake of the lives that were lost during that election, we should be able to, to respect their sacrifices and allow uh, what has taken place and will be to be. I want to therefore use this medium to congratulate the youth and government of Nigeria under the leadership of His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari for bringing an end to the crisis of youth leadership in Nigeria. Now to discuss the issue at hand in details, we have two guests. I would like to welcome Mr. Olushade Adeshola. He's the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Youth and Sport Development. So you welcome to the program. Good evening, Nigeria. Also on the program this evening is Bello Bala Shagari. He's the President, National Youth Council of Nigeria. Mr. Shagari, welcome to the program. Thank you. And my emergence as the president of the Youth Council is uh, also another, uh, uh, another achievement. It's In what way? An achievement because uh, for a very long time, uh, the council hasn't been doing what it's supposed to do. Unfortunately, it has had so many crises. It didn't, it didn't get so much attention from the government. But now, after many years, this government has uh, made sure that the Youth Council has come back. I know part of the crisis was, uh, it was as if we had several splinter groups yes and then uh, people were not fighting with a common front yes so what gives us the assurance now because it's a different uh, leadership entirely i think uh, for the first time 
now we have a leadership that was not imposed by the government. I am not imposed by anybody. You know, I just came in on board and I sold my ideas to Nigerians, young Nigerians, and they bought it. Okay. And what I, I commend them for that because for the first time, you know, money wasn't playing a role, and we are showing a language. We are speaking a language of change. That something has changed. Okay. Uh, Those that are creating the problem is the Minister of Youth and Sport. It's very, very unfortunate. We are not lucky to have him as our minister. Uh, last year, before the convention took place, we wrote to him that uh, my tenure has come to an end. I have to go and bring out some uh, other people that will take over power from me. They went and organized another electoral body, again, apart from my body. I, I should be the person that will inaugurate the body that will supervise the electoral activities of the election. So he went and set up a committee difference. But Murtala Gamji was fully in the picture and he agreed to the committee that was set by the minister and he was part of the whole process. I set up my committee different. So my committee went to a court and they have a court order stopping that of the minister. We learned that there was an order stopping the Gombe Congress. But thereafter, we also learned that the quarter has been vacated. It is on the strength of that the Gombe Congress took place and election was conducted and Belo Balashagari emerged. Based on the court judgment, we, we refused to go to Gombe. We now went to Portai Court and did our election and Ambassador Sokubo won the election. That's something that is not known to us. The so-called Port Harcourt Congress was an orchestration of some um, desperate young men who felt they had all the advantages of funding you know, and wanted to play politics with the council and decided to tie us to uh, the government of River State, uh, more or less like we were against the government of the state. It was a kangaroo concoction by some individuals who felt they were falling out and then had nothing to hold. And so they did what they did while we were in Gombe and then they just uh, packaged themselves and did some rubbish. The minister never gave his blessings. There was no presence of the federal government that runs the National Aid Council side by side. There was no presence of federal government. It's not known. What happened in Brazil is not known to the government. It's not known to the constitution of the National Aid Council of Nigeria. That and has so been the government. tradition in the council. They've always uh, been uh, trying to factionalize the, the youth council. Uh, I know at the time, there was a time when there were more than six presidents at the time, and the government uh, wasn't, didn't do anything about it. They, they worked with them like that. And, uh, and so on. So it became like a culture. So they thought that after our emergence in Gombe, they could also do the same to create a faction amongst us. And they, they tried to do that. I, I believe the ministry has done so much to resist any, any attempt to create any faction. We also vehemently resisted that and it's left for Nigerians to, to, to also do the same. We were surprised to our basement when we heard that there was some court order flying, fly, flying everywhere. We are not aware of it. But I am sure that Shagare is fighting so hard as the leader of this neck to see that we are joined us, and I think we are, we are joined us at the moment, and the matter is in court. And that's why I keep telling people when people threaten that they are going to remove these, they are going to dissolve, I said nobody can do that, it will be sub -judice. And I must commend the chairman of the board of trustees, Dixon Ako. He had also taken some very radical steps to support the Bala Belo Shagari led administration. We, as a leaders of Nigerian youth, we are, we are produced, we went to uh, Potai Court, River State, and we did our election. And Ambassador Sokubo won the election. Sokubo Saraibe, I have his history of how he came close to the council. And I still emphasize he's not a member of the National Youth Council. It has been established in Port Harcourt because he has been chased out. He came to the National simply because some of us have found a better way of communicating to the government of the state under Governor Wiki to say that this young man is not a member of council. That Congress you sponsored wholly. This was how he came about it. So the governor felt angry and then the governor, the commissioner withdrew their support from him. 
when he saw that he had lost his base, he now used every means available to him to now come to the center to antagonize Belo Balashagare's government. And that was how he claimed to have come on board because of money. You know, it's privileged to have um, to have come from a community where oil flows. And then his, his siblings, his brothers, somehow had some connect with oil transactions. I'm talking about Belema oil. And so he takes advantage of everyone Naira given. I'm sure he even lies to the Belema oil. You know, the information they give about the, what they do with the money is being given by Belema oil. I'm not sure that's what they are doing. And if we find time to explain to Jack Rich what they are doing with his name and with his resources, I'm sure he won't be happy. And based on what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing, what I've been advising Bello Shagari, he has seen it now. Those people that thought they would get something from him, not him to contribute something to Nigerian youth, when they discover that he cannot get, they cannot get what their selfish interest on him, now these are the people fighting him. As I'm talking to you now, both the minister, both the ACO, both everybody, they are back to the person I support that is Ambassador Sokubo. But still, in, with them supporting us, we, we know they are not there for the interests of Nigeria. They are there for the interests of their selfish interests. But meanwhile, I wrote a letter to the Minister for Youth and Sports Development, who made it clear to me in the letter that he has no hand or he did not receive anything in regards to my removal. And he believed that the Youth Council, which, which has a democratic uh, setting, should be able to solve its problems by itself without any interference. So he made it clear. But to my dismay, uh, later after that response, I saw Sokubo, Sarayi Sokubo, with the PA to the minister. And the PA to the minister was actually escorting him or going with him to, the, to an AU meeting in Addis Ababa. This is one of the people who supported me during the elections. I've told him, that one, he should not believe in the minister because our minister has not had any value to Nigerian youth and we pray he should not come back. We need somebody that will add value to the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari and above all have add value to the movement of Nigerian youth, not somebody that will cause problems in NFA, cause problems in basketball federation, handball federation, boxing federation, cause problems in youth council, cause problem in APC, in Plateau State, cause problem everywhere. There was also a time when I was invited to a uh, town hall meeting with national youth leaders that the president was going to have with national youth leaders here in Abuja. And I was about to ask my own question. The SA to the minister came to me personally and said to me that, that please, that when I'm, when I'm going to make my speech, that I shouldn't introduce myself as the president of the National Youth Council of Nigeria. And I was shocked. The newly elected EXCO have vowed to fight corruption within our organization in line with the policy of the present administration. As for me, we've always seen the government of President Buhari as a platform to thrive as a youth council. Because what has been the problem of the council? What has been the problem of the council that has been corruption? Most of them create wealth out of this whole crisis situation. So for some people, it's clear business. And that's, that's, that's of course, that's the Patakot package. The, the general problem of the council is the, the wrong alarm that was raised by apparently uh, one of us in the executive that, that raised the alarm that the presidency, in quotes, does not want Shagari. That was the genesis of the whole problem. And uh, through the Minister of Youth and Sports, the Osami, some persons are trying to achieve what I know. Our own president, His Excellency, President Muhammad Bari, is a man of integrity that does not condone insincerity. And uh, the, the way out is for the government to allow the council to run and abstain from interfering. So, so there are good people in the government. There are people who really meant well for this government. And there are people who, instead of serving the interests of the government, they are serving their personal interests. 